when you work on a franchise like Borderlands, or, or I would imagine any franchise that's, that's pretty popular, you need to be careful to not burn yourself out, right? It's, it's, uh, it's really easy to um, get sick of the thing you love if, you yeah. just, if that's all you do, right? Uh, so after Borderlands 2 and all the DLC for that, it was, uh, it was important for us to kind of go into hibernation, so to speak, and yeah. do something different. You know, we've experimented with some other things mm -hmm. and uh, you know, gave it enough time that where we kind of missed it and then we came back kind of in force, so. Are there any kind of familiar locations you'll revisit in this one at all? Yeah, I mean, like, so <laughs> it's funny. At one point in the game's development, it didn't start on Pandora, right? Um, and there was, a, there was a real push to like, well, we've been away a long time in Borderlands, is Borderlands. We want people to, to, to remember it fondly, right? So um, to kind of ground the player before they, they went off to all these different planets in the universe, uh, we were like, yeah, we need to start the game on Pandora. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's some familiar locations of Pandora, uh, some that have been seen before, a lot that have not, uh, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, cool. um, Obviously, um, one of the big things that makes Borderlands kind of stand out as its own thing is the number of guns. Is there anything else sort of beyond the amount of guns that's kind of new and fresh in this one that you really want to kind of shout about? Uh, yeah, so there's, yeah, there's several things. I, mean, I think the... The thing I'm most proud of is just what we've done with the moving and shooting, just like the feel of the game. Like we, we've known that like the loot loop works, right? People like that. And we've known that um, the mission structure works. Like it's uh, kind of just right. Like it's not too little, it's not too long. Uh, what we thought there was a lot of room to improve on, especially because it's been seven years since the last like numbered entry in the franchise, uh, was just moment to moment weapon handling. Uh, if we're going to call ourselves the gun game, like we really need yeah. to bring our A game for that. Uh, you know, it just, you know, player movement is something that you've just, especially in shooters, you've seen come a long way in yeah. just the last four or five years. You know, it's like it used to be you, kind of, you could move forward or backwards or strafe. Yeah. And like now you can do like a lot of stuff and that, it just feels better to be able to approach combat in all those ways. Yeah. There's also a lot of new social features, um, trying to make it easier for players to get into games with each other. Like you can match make from the pause screen, you can match make from like the zone transitions, you can see if your friends are in the next zone and you can just match on them right there. You can send mail to your buddies. Uh, just trying to take all the friction out of that. And then just for returning fans of the franchise, there's a lot of little quality of life things. I say they're little, but they, they sound little, they're actually kind of a big deal. Um, stuff like just, I can refill all my ammo is just hitting a button or I can, see what the item of the day is in the vending machine without having to actually like, go into the vending machine. Like, just stuff like that is, I think, gonna make a big difference. Um, did the kind of movement stuff come in kind of midway into development, uh, or was it kind of there from the start? Uh, no, it came in midway through development. Did that um, kind of break a lot of things, or? <laughs> uh, yes, it did break a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, it did broke a lot of things. We had, uh, level design was not happy, necessarily, that, uh, that some of that stuff came online when it did. Um, with mantling in particular, you can really, uh, you can climb a lot of things and that really does change the way you need to, to make a map. Um, sliding was added almost as like a comfort feature, right? Like I actually remember it was uh, the designer who brought it up, his name was Chris Strauss. Hi, Chris Strauss. Um, and uh, uh, I asked him like, why do we need this? He's like, well, we don't, but it feels awesome, yeah. you know? And so it's like, okay, well, fair, right? And you know, it was prototyped and in the game in a few days and it took a couple months to finish for real, but like we could feel it pretty quick. Yeah. It's like, wow, this is pretty fun. It's fun to just slide around. It's fun to, like, well, if we're going to slide around, might as well have it do stuff. Like when you slide into enemies, that should do something, yeah. right? So it, it kind of steamrolled from there. It kind of like picked up steam, so. How about the kind of, um, the gun designs, the kind of, um how outrageous to the guy? I mean, you mentioned a, a gun that fires cheeseburgers. A gun that fires cheeseburgers, yeah. the Gettle Burger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what yeah. kind of other stuff is kind of quirky and off the there's, uh, there's a gun uh, that you, it's a TDR that you throw it at the ground and it like spawns like legs and grows a brain. Uh, that one's interesting. Uh, there's uh, there's uh, guns that uh, instead of firing straight, they fire uh, like four rockets that arc like that. Like, so basically if you can time, if you can like get that distance just right, it does incredible damage, like just, just a variety of things like that. It was a, it was a real goal to, to make all the weapons more visually distinct, like not just mechanically distinct, like we've done that for sure, but like we wanted to make them more visually distinct as well. And uh, that's something where I think we've really come a long way.
There's a lot of uh, visual customization stuff. I mean, I've been playing for a couple of hours and I've picked up like skins and heads and all sorts of things. Are you going to have little paid things in there as well that you can buy? Uh, so the plan, no, no, we're not. Um, as far as selling stuff to players goes, I mean, historically we've, we've done DLC packs that I, I felt, I've always been very proud of the value we've put into those. Um, but as far as like, you know, spending a dollar or two to like buy a head or a skin, no, not, not, for, not for this one, not planning on it at all. Are you planning to go big again with the expansions? Because I mean, that's something that Borderlands has always done really well is make proper meaningful, big story driven things. Yeah, um, without getting into too much detail, I, uh, I, we definitely want to maintain that reputation for like making like expansive, high value content. Um, so that if you if you do spend money on it, that you do feel like that was a worthwhile purchase, and also uh, just supplementing that with a, a pretty good offering of just free content for everybody. You know that way, you don't feel like you're being nickeled and dimed to death. Right? We don't want that any more than you want that. Borderlands Two also uh, introduced new characters for the first time. Right. Uh, is that something you're playing with this new Vault Hunters? Um, possibly. Uh, so honestly, not really. Um, one of the things that we've like learned from the community is that. Uh, Rather than, hey, start a whole new character, like, yeah. like I've invested X hundred of hours or whatever into this character, I'd like to just have more for this character. And like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. When you put it like that, yeah, like maybe we should focus our energies there. So without, again, going into too many specifics, uh, looking more into being um, expansion-minded versus like new characters. So. Of course, you guys did Battleborn. Um, did you take anything away from your experience making that game in Borderlands 3 to bring over? Yeah, actually, we did. Um, one of the things about Battleborn was that we had, uh, all of the characters had like, a pretty good variety of skills, right? And we figured out in the course of making that game, the game had, uh, by the time all was said and done, 30 characters. And, you know, we had a pretty good array, like a pretty good toolbox of like action skill type things you could do, right? And so we had kind of been conservative before where like each of the Vault Hunters had just the one action skill and all that. And was like, well, we don't know that we actually have to play it that close to the vest. I think we can actually go a little further with this without having to worry that we're going to use up all of the ideas, right? So that, yeah, that was a takeaway from Battleborn for sure. After Battleborn, was there ever a, a temptation for Borderlands 3 to introduce some sort of competitive multiplayer element, or was that never a...? No, not really. Not really. It's, it's, um, it gets kicked around loosely, like on every game, but like it, it usually goes away pretty quick, because we... It, it's, it's very hard for us to imagine how we would fit what Borderlands is into a balanced competitive environment, right? And well, I don't want to ever rule it out, uh, but it's just not something we're really focused on right now. Yeah. You've still got dueling in this, haven't you? You can have, am I yeah, right thinking done. you can have four-way dueling now? Is yes, that a thing? that's true. Yeah, because yeah, it always used to be two. And it you used to be two. Yeah, yeah. So now what, the way dueling works is you drop down a, a dueling totem, then right. everybody who wants to participate goes and interacts with it, and then it counts it down, and then it starts it. So yeah, you can do a four-player duel now. Yeah. But I mean, that's, it's, that's the extent of it, and dueling is... You know, it's kind of a thing you do while you're waiting for your buddies to quit selling their gear and stuff like that. So. Inevitably, people end up shooting each other when... Yeah, exactly. Because, yeah, if you give players, uh, if you give players guns and you make them wait, they will inevitably yeah, nice. shoot. Uh, today, we mostly played as Flack as well, um, and he has three pets. Does he have any other pets later on? Uh, so, so there's three, like, archetypes of pet, right? Uh, there are, mul within each tree, there's multiple, uh, like, variants of that pet. Yeah. Like, for example, there's the Skag, there's the Great Horn Skag. Uh, there is uh, the Jabber, there is, like, several other Jabbers in the tree. The one that I'm thinking of right now is called the Beefcake Jabber. It's got, like, a, like a Johnny Bravo-style, like, quaff, and it carries a shotgun instead of a pistol. Like, you can do stuff like that, and uh, it, it, they feel quite a bit different when you play as them. Did you um, kind of let yourself off the leash with these characters? Because they feel quite extreme compared to the others. Um, how, who came up with the idea for like Flack and for you know, the big mech that um, so, Moe's So with Moe's, uh, well, I'm gonna kind of go in order here. Like Moe's was the first character that we really developed. And um, she w the idea was so we're gonna make a, uh, another soldier, right? Yeah. And uh, so in the first game was Roland, right? And he could throw out a turret, right? Yeah. So the evolution of that for Axton in Borderlands 2 was I'm gonna throw out a turret that can stick to stuff and maybe I can modify it in some ways. And we're like, okay, we'll take into its 
natural, like what's the coolest possible turret? Like, well, the coolest yeah. turret is one that you can just deploy and get into and like move around yeah. like a mech, right? So that was kind of the impetus for, for most. Amara, uh, the main motivation for her was we've had sirens in previous games and um, while, while we don't want to like take her away from what a siren is, we want her to be able to do the elemental uh, kind of uh, like mage nuker kind of thing. We wanted to do that. But also we wanted her to, to be able to mix it up and get in there close and, and not feel like she has to be on the periphery of the fight. Uh, Flak came next, uh, kind of a, a natural evolution of uh, Gage uh, from uh, Borderlands 2 and uh, Death Trap. Just the idea that like, there are players that would like to play by themselves, but also they want to have something else there that they can rely on and you know, buddy up with. Uh, and then Zane actually was, was the character that um, probably took the longest to nail down, but we knew from a very early point that we wanted kind of a operative spy James Bond style, like I've got a, a kit of gadgets and uh, I can use those gadgets in different combinations to kind of control the battlefield. So like it took a while to land on exactly what he was, but that was known very early. Uh, just to finish then, uh, what would you say, I guess, because we're talking Borderlands 3, if you had to pick one gun out of that billion, oh. to, which would you say oh, is your man. personal favorite? That is really hard. Okay, so I will give you like an archetype of gun. I can't like give you a specific gun, but I, okay. So there is a Vladov uh, assault rifle uh, that has like this, Vladov's thing is it has like kind of huge ammo capacities. Um, and uh, Vladov guns also have an underbarrel on all of them. Some of the assault rifles have an underbarrel that's uh, it's called an underbarrel bipod, right? And so basically, it takes your assault rifle and like there's a, a slight drawback if you, if you turn that bipod on, you can't sprint anymore. But like you become incredibly accurate, like it really stabilizes your accuracy. So it turns that gun into like a effectively like a highly accurate like chain gun, and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Borderlands 3 will be out September 13th uh, on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC.